step into a world where time bends and prehistoric creatures roam freely. The 1974 TV series Land of the Lost remains a classic that has made a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. What sets this show apart? Is it the engaging storyline, the impressive special effects, or the unforgettable characters? As you explore the mysteries of this land, be ready for a roller coaster of emotions. It's funny, shocking, and sometimes profoundly sad. The journey is just beginning, with more discoveries waiting for you. So, keep watching. Have you ever wondered what makes this TV series a timeless symbol of the industry? Or maybe you have a personal story of how the land of the lost has inspired or affected your life. We're curious to hear your thoughts. Now, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this timeless series. Your stories and memories matter, so drop them in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Get ready for a trip down memory lane or a new adventure in the world of the show. Your connection to this classic TV series is something special. Stay tuned for more surprises and revelations. Available on Netflix, this series, originally part of NBC's Saturday morning lineup in the 1970s, holds a nostalgic place in the hearts of viewers who grew up during that era. Alongside other shows like Sigmund and The Sea Monsters, Westwind and Emergency Plus 4, it offered a unique blend of live action adventure and storytelling. The plot centered around the Marshall family and their friend Chaka navigating a strange and perilous land inhabited by Sleesacks, man-eating dinosaurs, and frequent earthquakes. Despite occasional silliness and dated special effects, the show's early seasons boasted compelling writing and storytelling. As the series progressed, it took a turn with a father disappearing into a dimensional time warp, leaving the two remaining children to fend for themselves in a vast wasteland, occasionally contending with Sleesacks. The show, produced by Marty and Croft, has its charm, despite the later challenges in maintaining the initial quality. The review also notes the involvement of Walter Koenig in writing an episode, adding an interesting layer for fans. The inquiry about the whereabouts of certain actors, such as Holly's dad, reflects a genuine curiosity among enthusiasts about the cast's post-show trajectories. While acknowledging the show's silliness and occasional cheesiness, the review suggests that it remains a gem from the Marty and Croft production, with the lingering question of Holly's actors' whereabouts adding a touch of mystery to its legacy. In its final season, Land of the Lost introduced two new creatures, expanding the prehistoric roster. Lulu, a two-headed monster, took inspiration from the Cretaceous Plesiosaur. Alongside Lulu was Torchy, a fire-breathing monster based on the extinct Dimetrodon from Earth's pre-Mesozoic era. Surprisingly, basketball fans might recognize a familiar face among the Slee Stacks during the first season. Bill Lambeer, known for his time with the Cleveland Cavaliers and Detroit Pistons, made an appearance in the mysterious land. However, behind the scenes, tensions rose, leading to a falling out between the producers and star Spencer Milligan after season two. In a swift move, he was written out, and series writer-producer John Kubitschen stepped in to portray Milligan's character in the third season opener. The show's journey is marked by more than just on-screen adventures. The introduction of new monsters and unexpected casting choices added layers to its dynamic. The clash between producers and Milligan, resulting in a hasty exit and a replacement, reflects the challenges faced off-screen. Despite its ups and downs, the show remains a unique piece of television history where both the fictional and real worlds collided in unexpected ways. The addition of Lulu and Torchy and the surprising inclusion of a basketball star in the first season showcase its willingness to take creative risks. Land of the Lost Story is not just about its storyline and occasionally dated effects. It's also a tale of the behind-the-scenes struggles that can influence a show's trajectory. The show, with its unique monsters and unexpected casting choices, stands out in television history, where both fiction and reality intertwined unexpectedly. Nick, portrayed by Walker Edmiston, wore a unique costume in the show. Crafted from a wet suit tailored to his physique, the final outfit posed a challenge as it no longer fit. Slits were discreetly cut into the sides and concealed by a tunic addressing the sizing issue. Wesley Eura, a star in the series, not only appeared on screen but also lent his voice. Eura performed not just the opening and closing theme songs, but also revamped the number for the third season, showcasing his various contributions to the show. 
The series drew inspiration from literary sources like the Swiss Family Robinson and Edgar Rice Burroughs' works, including Tarzan of the Apes, John Carter of Mars, Pellucidar, and The Land That Time Forgot. These influences potentially inspired the land of the lost narrative. Additionally, Lost in Space, cancelled in 1968, shared connections with the Swiss Robinsons and Burroughs' mirroring land of the lost capacity for diverse themes. Similar to Lost in Space, Land of the Lost underwent significant changes in its third season, altering characters and themes. This shift reflected the fluid nature of both shows, allowing for the incorporation of various elements from Greek mythical monsters to alien encounters, showcasing a flexible narrative approach. In the mid-70s, a unique TV series took viewers on a captivating journey. With a three-season run, it started when star Wesley Eura connected with creator Sid Croft, sparking a creative partnership. Eura, after auditions, became the show's lead, and the casting process brought together the TV family. The Marshalls, Rick and Jack, played forest rangers navigating the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. As the series progressed, season three introduced Lulu and Torchy, expanding the roster of prehistoric creatures. Lulu, a two-headed monster inspired by the Cretaceous plesiosaur, joined Torchy, a fire-breathing creature modeled after the extinct Dimetrodon from Earth's pre-Mesozoic era. Notably, basketball star Bill Lambeer made a surprising appearance among the Slee Stacks during the first season. Behind the scenes, tensions arose during season two, leading to a fallout between the producers and star Spencer Milligan. In a swift move, Milligan was replaced by series writer-producer John Kubichin in season three. Inek, portrayed by Walker Edmiston, faced a unique costume challenge crafted from a wetsuit tailored to fit, but later requiring discreet slits to address sizing issues. Wesley Eura, beyond his on-screen presence, contributed to the show by performing theme songs and revamping one for the third season. Drawing inspiration from literary works like the Swiss Family Robinson and Edgar Rice Burroughs' creations, the show exhibited a narrative influenced by diverse themes. Similar to Lost in Space, it underwent significant changes in its third season, showcasing a flexible narrative approach that incorporated various elements. In the 70s TV landscape, this show carved its niche, leaving a lasting impression with a mix of adventure, creativity, and unforeseen challenges. It remains a unique piece of television history where fiction and reality intertwined unexpectedly. Kathy Coleman's autobiography, Run, Holly, Run, prominently features a playful remark from co-star Wesley Eura above the title. Eura humorously claims top billing on both the show and the book. It adds a lighthearted touch to their off-screen camaraderie. During the hiatus between the first and second seasons, the producers ingeniously kept viewers engaged. In the season one finale, Land of the Lost Circle, the marshals learned they aren't meant to be in their peculiar surroundings due to a time disturbance. And Nick reveals they must travel back in time to relive the accident that brought them there, creating a unique time loop, offering a fresh perspective on the narrative. A notable detail in the series is the Red Backpack's camping equipment, featuring the Kelty brand. It's a subtle yet identifiable element that adds authenticity to the character's outdoor adventures. These insights showcase the behind-the-scenes dynamics and clever storytelling techniques that contribute to the series' enduring charm. Each detail, from playful banter among the cast to creative plot twists, adds layers to the show's legacy, making it more than just a typical 70s TV series.